Ever wonder if you're allowed to fly near an airport or maybe how complicated the process actually is? Well, today I'm going to show you the not so secret way to getting instant airspace approval and every drone pilot should know about this. Now, in the next few minutes, you'll learn how to get instant approval to fly near an airport, the exact steps to submit your request, and then at the end, a special trick to fly higher than what the FAA limit is. Let's dive in. Airspace approval in the United States is required when flying near certain areas, which mostly is near airports. And there are two ways to get airspace approval for drones, the FAA drone zone and the low altitude authorization and notification capability. That's right, that's a mouthful, it's called LANCE. And LANCE is available for most airports and for most operation, but it does have some limitations that we can talk about in a minute. Now, LANCE uses the FAA UAS facility map in order to show the surface airspace that is or is not part of the program. Now, areas that are part of the LANCE program are gonna be showing up with green squares in the FAA map, while the portions that are not LANCE approved are going to be showing in red. Airspace is then broken up into grid squares that are associated with a specific altitude. The number inside of the square is the maximum altitude that you can get immediate approval for. It does not mean that you can fly there without approval, you still have to get approval. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at an example here of the Prescott Airport, which is where we are, using the Aloft Air Control app, and then we'll request authorization. Now, Prescott here is a Class D airport with a Class E extension on the southwest side. Now, to select where you would like to fly, simply drop a pin by tapping on the map. You can also use the search function on the bottom corner to input an address or a light log. Now, let's say that we're going to fly near Watson Lake, which is one of our favorite area right here. I'm going to tap to drop a pin. Now, once you've selected the pin, you can click on Lance, and it is going to ask you the purpose of the flight, either a Part 107 flight, which is labeled as commercial or a recreational flight. I would rather look at it as recreational versus non-recreational. In this case, we are gonna be doing a non-recreational flight under Part 107, so I'm gonna click commercial. And now you have the boxes, and you can click and hold on the different corners in order to expand the box to where you are gonna be flying. And you notice that in this case, we're gonna be flying over the entire lake right here. The next step is to decide on what altitude you wanna fly at. And you notice here we are in an area that has 400, which means that we are allowed to fly up to 400 feet and get instant approval. I can slide this little slider here to select the altitude. I always pick the maximum altitude that I'm allowed to fly at. And then I can click next. You'll then need to have to pick the date and the time of your flight. Keep in mind that you can request these lens approval up to 90 days in advance. So you can pre-plan all of your mission ahead of time if you want to and not wait for the last minute. You're gonna click the next button after this and now it says that you are eligible for pre-approval. This is what we mentioned before. If you're flying at or below the altitude that's in the grid, then you can get almost instant approval. We're gonna click next one more time and now you're reviewing your contact information. Make sure that this is all correct. Make sure that you are familiar with all of the terms of operation, specifically the one here at the bottom that says altitude limits or absolute values above ground level, which shall not be added to the height of any structures. This is always something that people forget about, but you cannot apply the rule where you can fly 400 feet above a structure and 400 feet within a structure uh, under Part 107. This does not apply here in Lance approved airspace. Once you're ready, you're gonna click agree and submit, and all of a sudden you will get approval. You'll get either a text message or an email, depending on the notification settings that you set, and uh, then you're all set. Now, if you wanna learn more about using a loft in general, we have a free deep dive course that is available on our website, and we put a link down in the description. Now remember the special trick that I mentioned earlier to fly higher than the FAA limits? Well, it's called further coordination. And it can be done using either a loft air control, this app right here, or using the FAA drone zone. And yes, this is only available to part 107 operators. You're gonna request these at least 60 days before you have a mission where you need to fly above the grid or in a zero grid. We haven't talked about the zero grid yet, but you will find these very close to the runway and you'll need to get special approval to fly there. Now make sure you submit as much information as you can about your operation and how you'll keep everyone on the ground and in the air safe.
Now let's go ahead and talk about some of these lens limitations and specifically those with waivers. And this is somewhat of a niche thing and it only pertains to part 107 operators since recreational flyers actually cannot get waivers. If you are issued a waiver to fly in airspace that requires authorization, you actually can't use lens in order to get approval. Weird? Yes, absolutely. Now, instead, you'll need to use the FAA drone zone and request what's called an airspace authorization. Remember these red zones that I talked about earlier on the FAA facility map? Well, that's another limitation. And certain military bases or other areas are restricted and require an application in the FAA drone zone for both Part 107 and recreational flyers. Both of them can fly in these areas, but you'll need extra approval. Another warning that I want to give you about the Lens apps, and this has to do with TFRs, temporary flight restrictions. Keep in mind that they might be delayed in showing in the app, and some of the TFRs, like the Stadium TFR, may not even show up in here at all. So be sure to check those with the FAA map going on TFR that fa.gov before you go for a flight. And if you're starting out and you want to know more about the rules to fly your drone in the United States, make sure to check out this video right here and we'll see you in the next one.